She was meant to take over women's tennis after Serena Williams, but something tragic happened. Was it the WTA curse, mental health struggles, or loss of motivation? What happened to Garbina Muguruza? It's July 2015, and a 21-year-old Garbina Muguruza is the 20th seed at Wimbledon. She takes out several big names and makes it to the final, where she loses to Serena Williams in straight sets. Though she lost, Muguruza made Serena work for every point, and it became clear after the final that the Spaniard was the next big thing on the tour. True to those predictions, Muguruza won the French Open less than a year after that final, and guess who she beat? Serena Williams. Muguruza had now become the world number two and had all the momentum. 2017 came, and Serena Williams was still at the top after winning the Australian Open, but not long after, she was out of the tour due to her pregnancy. The timing was perfect for Muguruza to take control. Although she couldn't defend her French Open title and even fell out of the top 10, Muguruza won her second major at Wimbledon where she met Serena's sister Venus in the final. Garbina beat Venus in straight sets and even bageled her in the second set. In doing so, the Spaniard became the first person to defeat both Williams sisters in major singles finals. At the end of the US Open, Garbina had finally become the world number one. With Rafael Nadal also leading on the men's side, it meant that Spain had become the only country to top both the ATP and WTA rankings since the United States did it in 2003. Muguruza's success was of personal and national significance, but it all came crashing like a ton of bricks. Garbina's fall was a lot faster than her rise to the top. She spent only four weeks as world number one. After a series of losses after the 2017 US Open, she relinquished the top spot and never made it back there. Although she was named WTA Player of the Year, it was more or less a smokescreen because none of us predicted what was to come after. 2018 came and Muguruza began to deal with physical problems and retired from the Brisbane and Sydney international tournaments. Early round losses in tournaments meant that she was at risk of dropping down the rankings. Reaching the semis of the French Open was her best performance in a major as all the others ended in second round exits. By the end of the year, Muguruza had dropped to world number 18. Her struggles continued in 2019 and the Spaniard ended up splitting with her longtime coach Sam Sumik. With first round losses at Wimbledon and the US Open and underwhelming performances for most part of the season, Muguruza fell out of the top 30 by the end of the year. But not before she climbed to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest mountain. Bet she had to get to the top somehow. The downward spiral seemed to end at the beginning of 2020 after Muguruza made it to the Australian Open final. She saw a return to form during the pandemic shortened season and she became a constant presence in the top 20 for most of the year. 2021 was even better as she won her first WTA finals championship and ended the year ranked number three. But just when we thought all of it was coming together for the Spaniard again, her career nosedived again and this time it was worse. 2022 was arguably Garbina's worst year on the tour. She didn't even make it to the second week at any Grand Slam event, and she lost one too many matches after being a set and a breakup. She ended up with a negative 12-17 win-loss record. Underwhelming performances and poor results at almost all events meant that she found herself out of the top 50 for the first time in almost a decade. After losing six consecutive matches, Muguruza felt like it was time to take a break, which she did earlier this year. She says she will be back during the summer, but she wasn't specific. So we can only hope that the 29-year-old makes her comeback as planned because as of now, she is ranked outside the top 200. To fully understand the problem with Garbina, we need to remind ourselves of how she was in her prime. An aggressive baseliner who could hit flat, powerful ground strokes on both wings, Garby was one of the select few who could actually match Serena Williams' power. The Spaniard was composed in big moments and often dictated rallies from the baseline. She reached 113 miles per hour on her first serve and often produced many aces in her matches. Simply put, every shot from the long-limbed Spaniard was explosive. Forehands, backhands, serves, returns, everything. She was a pretty tough opponent for most players on the tour. The two-time Grand Slam champ, has winning head-to-head -head records against former world number ones Victoria Azarenka, Angelique Kerber, and Simona Halep, and she was even tied at 3-3 against Serena Williams. She was that good, so her decline remains one of the greatest mysteries of tennis in the last decade. But we could also ask the same question for a couple of other WTA players who flattered to deceive. Who comes to mind? Karolina Pliskova, Sofia Kennan, Bianca Andreescu, Caroline Wozniacki, Emma Raducanu? A few weeks ago, I made a similar video on Emma Raducanu, and many of us agreed that Emma's problems were due to poor management, the press, physical problems, and mental health struggles. But the problem isn't so straightforward with Garbina. It hasn't necessarily been injuries for her. We can't also call her overrated or overhyped. 
it wouldn't even make sense considering her achievements, so we are left with a few differentials. Here's what I think. Muguruza might be dealing with three major issues. Loss of motivation. Although she did try playing in small tournaments and worked on a couple of things to improve her results, it just looked like she had lost some of that drive that pushed her to the pinnacle of the sport. In some matches, there appeared to be a lack of effort once she started losing, but even at that, she sounded optimistic about being able to turn her fortunes around before she completely disappeared from the tour. Nowadays, she seems to be enjoying life away from the sport, traveling a lot and spending time with her loved ones. Sometimes, it seems that Garvey just couldn't keep up with her commitment to playing tennis at the highest level and might have struggled mentally. Last year, Muguruza admitted that in a bid to rediscover her form, she folded under pressure and wasn't enjoying herself on the court. In the same vein, her problems could be a result of changed priorities. Women's tennis in many ways has been affected by personal decisions. Some players want to have kids and do other things at some point in their career. For Muguruza, we found out not too long ago that she'd be getting married to the love of her life, a fan who asked her for a selfie a few years back. We've seen it happen before. Many players have changed priorities and are no longer as hungry as they once were before becoming successful. The Spaniard won Wimbledon at a young age, has two majors, a WTA finals title, 10 WTA titles, over 300 WTA career wins, and has been world number one. It is very possible that Garbinia's priorities might have changed. I don't know for sure, but there is also the possibility that she just needs some time away to find a winning spark. Which brings us to the third point, finding the right team. Muguruza ended her three-year partnership with 1994 Wimbledon champion Conchita Martinez. It is normal for a relationship to run its course between players and coaches. Although Conchita has been instrumental to many of Garbinia's successes, their separation right now might just be a huge step in the right direction. Because it had become very clear that something wasn't clicking on the court. Garbinia has the talent and the physique, and with the right team, she could turn her fortunes around. Of course, that's assuming she still wants to stick around. One major thing she might be looking to change would be her ability to add more variety to her game and become a problem solver on the court. The potency of her forehand has varied wildly in recent years, and her style of play has seemed a little mechanical at times, so there is a lot of work to be done on her game as well. Tennis is an individual sport, and as such, it could get really lonely for players, especially when they have to deal with personal problems. The demands that come with being a professional athlete and being the best in the game are simply outrageous. And only a few players have the mental resilience to be consistent with the weekly grind for decades. It's no surprise that we've seen many players break down mentally and emotionally. Ash Barty suddenly retired last year. Naomi Osaka had taken breaks even before becoming pregnant, and we've seen other talented players appear and disappear a lot more often. At 29, Muguruza has already enjoyed a Hall of Fame career, and no doubt this break would give her lots of time to reflect on what she wants to get out of the game and the sport. Whether we like it or not, breaks are healthy and necessary at some point. Not everyone has to win 20 majors. Muguruza turns 30 in October, and she still has enough time to make a statement and prove her doubt is wrong, but even if she doesn't, there shouldn't be too many complaints. On the men's side, no other active player better reminds us of Muguruza's story than Dominic Team. What happened to him? Watch this video to find out.